Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm riding this. Oh sorry. Always this happens with me. I don't know why. Okay, I'm riding this. This is the BMW R18. You see the key is really very nice. It says first edition. It's keyless, obviously keyless entry and everything and you know it's flipped. You know why? This is actually used for the handlebar lock. Okay, I'm kind of struggling with it, but forget that for a moment. This is a motorcycle which is very important. I'll tell you why, because it's very expensive, but that's not the reason why it's important. It's important because it has the biggest boxer engine in any motorcycle. Just look at that engine popping out from both the sides. Okay, it's very traditional. I mean, they have modeled it from a retro BMW and they've tried to replicate almost everything. So you get a round headlight with the DRL in the center. It has this BMW badging as well. Attention detail is massive. It says BMW LED right there okay it's going to rain any moment it's actually started raining very badly you get spoke wheels but these are tubeless tires and there's so much chrome on this motorcycle is absolutely obnoxious this brake caliper is also finished in chrome they've given this fork cover as such and of course from the side you realize the bike is quite long but has so much chrome it's absolutely crazy you have a reflector here on the side and uh, it says R18 first edition right there. That is the drive shaft because it's a sharp drive, not a bell drive. And even though it's exposed, you don't have to do any maintenance as such, which is really very nice. BMW written right there as well. Berlin built for the rear master cylinder. The engine pops out completely. This is actually a 901cc motor on one side. I mean, one cylinder. Okay, 1800cc, of course, 1802cc to be precise. BMW badging is in so many places. You get this spin stripe on the first edition. And the seat also has the BMW badging. It's a single seater. Seat actually looks quite comfy. However, the seat height is low at just 690mm. I'm not really going to be comfortable on this motorcycle. But look at the exhaust. It's so freaking thin. Finished in chrome again. You get spoke wheels at the rear. The rear tire size happens to be an obnoxious 180 65 16. Yeah, the front one actually happens to be a 120 and it's a 19 inch. Yeah, the front tire doesn't look as big as I would expect it to be, one, but 120 70 19 is the size of the tire. Beautiful looking motorcycle. Here is where you actually lock the handlebar. Okay, it's exposed screws and all. Okay, it's getting windy, it's getting rainy. The rear lights are kind of slim. Okay, this is actually the light and this is the indicator. Has a light on again right now. And this is the BMW badging. The rear fender is a bit big or kind of wide as such. However, the exhaust is a piece of art. Just look at the exhaust. Really beautiful. This motorcycle screams absolute madness in terms of appearance. Really beautiful looking motorcycle. Now you get round mirrors, of course. It says Berlin built here on the front master cylinder as well, front brake master cylinder. Berlin built here on the speedometer rather, the instrument cluster. Now we we'll come to that in a bit. Lot of chrome, wide handlebar, again finished in chrome. Chrome here as well. Everywhere you name it, there is chrome. Okay, here I have the key. Now, when I have the key, I can just press this button. There it is, it turns on. There's a full swipe up, and below here you've got information. You've got telltale lights everywhere. Rock is actually the mode right now. It says Berlin built, of course. Now, in order to browse through this menu, you just press a button, and there you can see a lot of information. That is a tachometer you can get into setup odometer, twin trip meters, all the information you would need, actually more than the information you would ever need. And there's obviously a battery voltage meter and it's also telling you the date and what's the fuel economy of the vehicle. I'll just keep it on the tachometer because that's important to me. This is the hazard light switch. This is to get in the menu. This is the indicator and this is the horn. Horn is actually quite loud. Let's turn on the motorcycle. You have to press the clutch to turn it on. It absolutely roars to life. Look at the kind of shake happening on the front handlebar right now. The handlebar is only at the front. See, the RPM meter is dangling around 800-1000 RPM, but it moves around quite a bit. Okay, the mirrors could have been slightly better in terms of the way it's done. By the way, this is the front brake master cylinder. This is a dummy unit just for aesthetic purpose. Yeah, okay, this is to open the fuel lid. Look at the way it is actually shaking right now. Anyways, that's not important. What's important is how does it sound. Let's rev it a bit. Every time you rev it now, it shakes like mad. But how is it to ride? Kind of, maybe a handful for someone of my height, but let's get going. But before we get going, you can see the light. Right now it's turned on, what we're gonna do. It's actually got auto headlight on. Uh, you see, high beam, that looks nice and bright. Levers are also adjustable on this bike on both the sides. But since it's raining so much, I'm going to quickly get inside the GLS. Daniel is going to figure out what's going to happen next. See ya. All right, we're all set to go. Turning on the motorcycle. And there it rose to life, literally it rose to life, my goodness. The way it rose to life is absolutely crazy. Into first gear and off we go. Straight away, let me tell you, the bike is actually quite a bit of a handful to ride at lower speeds, huh? 
uh, I just uh, you know turned on the air conditioning by going full on throttle because when you go heavy on the throttle now there's some good amount of wind which is blowing anyway I'm telling you the biggest challenge in life is taking a turn because the handlebar is not that fluid here I'm trying to take a u-turn and all of a sudden the handlebar becomes inconsistent and then find that difficulty as well but then again get into the throttle it feels better in fact this motorcycle feels really nice and medium speeds it's only at lower speeds and at higher speeds where it kind of feels uneasy but before I get going on to a proper launch let me tell you a few things which I've missed it's got rubber foot pegs yeah that's kind of cheap for a bike of this price and you know what it scrubs the pegs on the lower side because of low cornering clearance of course and there's a BMW logo which has been put right between both the cylinders uh, which you can see now and the cheapest part about this bike and I know I should not say this and I'm so sorry all prospective R18 owners because this could happen to you but when you open this it comes into your hand there is no key here so someone can fill water or remove fuel from your bike yeah that's kind of disappointing and there's no fuel gauge either however there's at least a hill start assist clearing speed breakers no problem at all although it has a massively long wheelbase no problem on speed breakers because the ground clearance is decent enough even on the worst of speed breakers you have to be just a little careful and this mirror keeps moving so the mirror doesn't offer you a good view of what's behind problem is there's so much talk now the mirrors keep vibrating all the time in the city kind of feels uneasy to ride this bike and uh, here I'm actually trying to be more careful because of the sticking out cylinders however I have to understand one thing that the handlebar is wider than the cylinder so the cylinders are not actually exposed but around the corner <laughs> it becomes difficult the weight of this bike 345 kgs my weight maybe around the 75 kgs the resultant weight is a colossal 420 kgs is what i'm lugging around right now that's a lot of weight and the handlebar is so ahead now that a person with my hands which are as long as kanun ke hath, still i find it very difficult to hold on to the handlebar and you have to hold on to the handlebar for dear life there's another bmw ahead it's a fake m with quad exhaust yeah it has the m badging nice tail lights oh my god the handlebar becomes so heavy uh, it's not a real m5 unfortunately the f60m that's not it anyways on to the throttle it feels nice actually the engine has some amount of character to it actually a lot of character that's the reason they've gone for a boxer engine we are in rock mode there are three modes rock roll and rain rock is the full bounty roll is a mid level power output and rain is obviously sissy mode which we'll not use today Aha, the braking performance is really nice but initial bite is missing but that's something you expect from every cruiser bike they don't really have an initial bite gearbox is slick shifting clutches kind of light i would say now you can notice it's idling at 1000 rpm and there's this constant movement anyways off we go you can't get really hard on the throttle but you can if you want to first gear 5700 rpm red line 80 kilometers per hour false neutral into second The torque rush is absolutely madness. So this is a boxer engine, which happens to be a 1802 cc twin, obviously a uh, twin cylinder boxer engine. That's how it is, and it produces only 91 horsepower at 4,750 rpm. But it's the torque output, which is colossal, at 157, 158 newton meters, which comes in at a low 3,000 rpm. In fact, almost 95% of that torque output comes in just at 2,000 rpm. That's why this bike is so tractable right from get go. You can feel the punch, and because it's a boxer engine. And you get it on the throttle depending on where the camshaft and the piston is the bike can actually move so it's moving the side you can actually shift a lane but you're just getting onto the throttle my goodness what a motorcycle what power what torque rush insane now why do you use a boxer engine first and foremost a boxer engine has more torque when compared to a v-twin what exactly is a boxer engine that's an interesting question basically a boxer engine has the cylinders horizontal in a v it's obviously in a v sort of vertical but the positive is better weight distribution and center of gravity no the bike is not going to make it from this gap at least the other advantage of a boxer engine is that obviously it's sort of more smooth and more refined it doesn't have that rocking movement and uh, i would say that the advantages far outweigh the negatives negative of course is the fact that your engine is sticking out all the way in case you have a fall that's a very expensive engine to damage obviously you can get crash guard and stuff like that and honestly i don't feel the center of gravity working here because the bike tips to one side it's very difficult to maneuver this motorcycle i mean taking a turn like this mm, you have to have little balls of steel and maybe balls of chrome because this bike is all about chrome maneuvering at middle speeds no problem at all it's just at lower speeds now you feel it's a big handful and at higher speeds also you feel it's kind of a handful but for the most part you won't face any issue because you get on the throttle i'm not kidding this motorcycle will do 200 kilometers per hour but there will be so much wind blast at higher speeds now you have to contend with all that and more you see there's so much torque the torque actually makes the mirrors vibrate okay it's not the vibration from the engine but the torque rush <laughs> 
absolutely crazy it's got a six speed gearbox and here i am right now getting into six gear now you see it's become so smooth so refined it's actually like it's you're gliding through you can't hear the engine it's so silent 80 kilometers per hour it's like 17 50 rpm i open the throttle okay immediately it punches ahead it has a nice sound sort of a potato potato sound of harley davidson bikes it sounds better obviously but it has this nice rumble to it and riding in six gear you realize things are so calm and peaceful it's only thing is when you ride in lower gears at higher speeds then things go a little north now the problem is rather south as such and the red line comes in at 5700 rpm along long sweepers there's plenty of grip the tires have so much grip on offer it's absolutely insane i love the way this bike actually performs but the weight is something which is really massively massive the ride quality is okay okay the suspension is obviously on the firmer side on the stiffer side and thanks to the long wheelbase now it doesn't throw you off at high speed so you still feel kind of composed on this bike even at as you up the pace on this machine and the gearbox is super slick shifting it's so smooth it's so refined as well and we're going to take a turn here so around the corners you're going to scrape the uh, you know, foot pegs for sure and the front suspension has a travel of 120 mm the rear suspension has a travel of 90 mm which gets the job done but the ride is good on good roads on bad roads it's <laughs> it's really terrible the ride on bad roads what happens now on bad roads you can feel every bump and kind of moves you around so much this bike actually kind of moves you around a lot we hit a speed breaker ahead we have no problem crossing it because yeah ground clearance is decent enough but it's only thing is that i have to be so careful while taking a u-turn it's not my cup of tea okay turning radius is massive well, that's what she said and the foot pack positioning is a little front side but my foot is below the engine although thankfully the engine doesn't really heat up so heat dissipation is good only thing is if you touch the engine by mistake you're going to get burned the engine is hot it doesn't put that heat onto you however overall this is a lovely machine very expensive indeed but stays true to the original not the original as such i mean the retro charm is definitely there on this motorcycle and this is acres better than any harley davidson motorcycle on earth what a beautiful machine ah brakes are so good good thing is doesn't have too much initial bite so it doesn't scare you silly because you break hard weight transfers and you're like mm, i can't handle that it's so heavy now of course it's got traction control and the riding modes i mean make the traction control intensity differ so it's more intuitive in uh, say rain mode to ensure you're able to put that power down and obviously the maps also change so less power in rain mode the most in rock mode and it's also a very nice way of naming Yeah, it's also a very nice way of naming the riding modes. Yeah, rock, roll, wow, rock and roll. Here we go. Total response is so freaking immediate. I'm really enjoying this motorcycle, but there's so much wind I have to contend with. Oh my God, what a motorcycle! Yeah, I, I think I need to hit the gym to make muscles to be able to handle such a heavy machine. This bike should be classified into a heavy machine, not a motorcycle. Trust me on that. It doesn't look as intimidating as it turns out to be because it's not easy to actually maneuver it in the city. For the city, the best mode happens to be roll or maybe rain mode as well. Feels a little calmer there and gearbox is so nice. It's so beautiful. Love the gearbox on this bike amazing you can feel the constant rocking here we are into first gear having the motor and off we go ha <laughs> this is a mild muncher to say the least there are three variants on offer the standard one is priced at 24.6 lakhs on road mumbai this one which happens to be the first edition is priced at 27.8 lakhs on road mumbai and then there's our top of the line which is the classic which also gets you know panniers and all those things which are kind of unnecessary but still necessary enough that is priced at almost 30 lakhs 29.8 lakhs on road mumbai making it a very expensive motorcycle but then you get a bike which is absolutely mind-bogglingly sensational and the way it performs and the way it looks and obviously the riding feel is so much intact as well only thing is this is not about riding long distance it's all about going the short haul enjoying the talk rush and then skipping the gym session because you've already done it on this machine 16 liter fuel tank the fuel efficiency is somewhere between 10 to 17 kilometers per liter depending on your riding style if you open the taps too much you're not going to get more than 12 kilometers per liter but hey who really cares this is a bmw which stays true to the ultimate driving machine philosophy of having a lot of engagement while riding and a lot of fun as well but just very heavy 
very cumbersome in the city and on that disappointment it's time to end thank you so much for watching if you like this video i'm going mad bye